on KRB, a cumulus media station. Good morning, everyone. We ready? Live from the TSU Energy Studio. The Rule and Ryan Show with producer Eric, Special K, and Sam. You know, for years, like Friday night was always retro movie night in my house. Being a single dad with my daughter Faith, that was the thing I looked forward to was like Friday nights. We're going to watch an old movie. You're going to watch something that dad watched growing up. And see how you like it. And she did like a lot of them. There were a few misfires. We have cool movies from the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Like, my parents, I don't want to watch stuff from the oh 60s or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, like, I found the boring. key was, if it was in black and white, there was no way. I didn't even want to watch it if it was in no, black and white. How can I get my not. kid to watch it? Yeah. Yeah. We do that. Either. We watched The Valley of the Dolls the other night on Sunday night. What's that? I can't tell you what that's about. Uh, that's it's, a, it's an iconic movie. I've heard the title, but I don't know what it's about. It's about cheerleaders? No. no. It's, it's about these women who are trying to, I think they're trying to get into Hollywood, and they're taking a lot of pills. What? Oh, is that what you got from that? <laughs> yeah. So just normal. That's why I didn't like Wizard of Oz. <laughs> didn't it start out in black and white? It did. Oh, yeah, and then it goes into color. So as a kid, awesome. I think I saw that. I'm like, I'm, I'm it came out. this. Pal, Patty Duke was in it. Valley of the Dolls? Yes. Okay. Well, and Patty 833-390-KRBE Duke... while Kevin tells us about the Valley one. of the Dolls. <laughs> yeah, did your mom and dad one. make you watch that movie, Kev, and you actually liked it? No. This is, like Ryan said, a retro movie night, so we try to find some weird old movie that we've probably heard of yeah, but never I watched. Mean, retro to me is like something that happened within our lifetime. I don't really want to go back and watch something that was like 50 years before oh, I was born. Oh, something that meant something to me as a kid. Yeah. The memories But it's head. Patty Duke, Like never ending stories. Who the hell's Patty Duke? <laughs> Never ending story terrified me, and I didn't want, I didn't want to watch it because that giant flying dog oh, whatever so, it had. I loved it. I was like, was I'm not going to watch this. I don't know what it was. I mean, it was a flying animal of some sort or a giant animal. That horse, they're trying to pull that? it. The Valcor? I don't know. I didn't watch the movie. It scared me when I was a kid. I, was I like, never I saw it. It was a movie. scary movie. But People I do love that know movie. it from Stranger Things because they're singing that song. Oh, yeah. The right never the ending story. Oh, yeah. oh that's right. Oh. So we have people sitting by 833-390-KRV. Sorry to cut you off there on American Idol. Um, and uh, we're asking the question, what is a movie you loved? And you thought, well, this would be great to share this with my child now that my child's getting older or I want to show my child this movie and let's see if they love it as much as me and they hated it. Anybody have Goonies on there? Anyone call for Goonies? Um, somebody texts about Goonies and Goonies can be my story because my son is so terrified of Goonies. He refuses to be in the room if my daughters want to watch it. Sloth can be scary. Because it's the part where Mikey is going down into the dungeon and all you hear is the screaming of Sloth. And he's got the chains on his on his uh, wrists and he's chained to the chair. What was he like, the baby Ruth? He liked yeah. baby Ruth candy bars. And just just the walk to the dungeon, my son was out. Imagine having he basements. He will not. Yep, that was what, Pennsylvania. Yeah, he will not. Oh, <laughs> wow. Ooh, it's in there. It's down there. There's somebody down there. Was um, there something that terrified you, Sam? Well, we're going to go to the calls first. Calls. Okay. Because Morning is standing by, and I don't want, I want people to get to work so we can, you know, get them on their day. Hi, Morning. Good morning. Hi. It's kind of funny, but it's morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'm sure you hear this all the time. We'll skip over the jokes. Um, but tell us, what is the movie that you like that you were disappointed your child is not? Um, so Home Alone. I'm like, how really? do you not get it? It's hilarious. It's too funny. Oh my One of them gosh. likes it. The other two are not interested. I'm like, wow. Like, it just disappoints me. What were their ages that... Uh, were they too young or they didn't like it? No, I I feel the, like the little ones are more into the more interactive type of movies now uh, because they're uh, it's a eight year old and then the five, but the fifteen year old can watch it all day every day on repeat with me. Like, how can you not enjoy a movie where you light a man's head on fire? Well, yeah, you know, okay, yeah, to that point, right? though, morning, it's I don't like know, like, of, of the ones that life. they don't like it because of what's happening in the movie, or they just think the premise is boring. Like, which one is it? I think it's, they just think it's boring. Okay. They're used to more, like, mm-hmm. action, like, color and stuff. You know, the newer stuff, I guess, because they're just, they're younger. It's well, not a slow movie. Because my younger like, one doesn't like when he steps on the on the nail on the tar stairs. Yeah. Like, he freaks yeah, yeah. out. He's like, uh-huh. oh, I can't watch it. I mean, like a cartoon. I'm, I'm yeah. a grown-up, and I don't like that movie. So. Really? Home Alone? Yeah, that's Mark because... loves that movie. I roll. So he fun. can watch that with Santi. It's so fun. I don't know. I think, I think it's the wussification of America, because cartoons now are like Paw Patrol and stuff. We had fun stuff. Yeah, stuff that where you... Yeah, Tom and Jerry. Yeah, don't Tom you, and Jerry's always getting hurt. Talk smack about Paw Patrol. Who like that Paw Patrol? Oh. Plus, they say a lot of kids now, they look at the times, like even Gen Z, they look at... How long is that movie? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's too 40, long. No thanks. No. Really? Yeah. Wow. Even Winona Ryder was talking about that. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, she's doing that. Then why uh, do they make the these tour. movies so freaking long? Well, it's only Marvel. Three hours. Like, I'm like, no. Nikki's up next at 833-390-KRBE. Hi. Good morning, Nikki. Hi. How are you? Good. I'm wondering. What is a movie that you liked and you thought for sure my kids are going to like this? I'll share it with them and they didn't like it. 
I thought that my kids were going to absolutely love My Fair Lady and Mary Poppins because when we used to watch it as kids, we had it on VHS and we would watch it, rewind and watch it again, like nonstop. My this Fair like Lady. Oh, my Fair Lady. I, I didn't watch that one, honey. No. I, I don't even... <laughs> Mary Poppins, I got you. But what was their reaction to Mary Poppins? Like, how far in did you get with them on Mary Poppins and they weren't mesmerized by the amazing oh, nanny shit that she is? They... 15 minutes later, they were looking for other devices. They're like, uh, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 15 tough. minutes. They couldn't give it 15 minutes. They, they didn't make it to where she takes all the stuff out of her bag, the lamp, oh. the, the duck, goose, oh, umbrella, it's whatever. It's like, all right. that. I mean, that was so magical no, when Mary okay. Poppins... Hey, kids, we're going to watch Pygmalion tonight. Yeah. My Fair Lady, oh, no thanks. I'd be like, what, what did I do? Did I get grounded? Yeah. <laughs> this is punishment, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not on the same page with My Fair Lady. We definitely are with Mary Poppins. Hey, kids, I'm sorry they didn't like it. Let's watch Tale of Two Cities tonight. I'm sorry Woo! I didn't like it. Okay, yeah, Brant's up next. Barn burner. <laughs> 833-390-KRVE. What is a movie you liked as when you were growing up and your kids don't like it when you try to watch it with them? Hi, Brant. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. I've tried to watch. Uh, honey, I shrunk the kids with my eight-year-old about three times, uh-huh. and be- <laughs> he's already scared enough of the grass as it is. And he saw when they were oh. in the grass. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh, oh my God, that is no. terrifying. Oh. Something. Hey, they they sleep in Legos. They sleep. Oh no, no, he saw that grass part and freaked out and walked out of the room. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! Because think about that. You know, remember how like the dew on the grass was yes. this giant yes. waterfall. Water- or like the bug, the ants. Oh my god! Oh, yeah. that, I can. How old is your child when you try to? Eight. Um, eight years old watching this. I've tried since six, and now he's eight and still won't watch it because he doesn't <laughs> wow. like walk on the grass. Do like three of those movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. The yeah. Baby? honey, I blew up the yeah. kid. Yeah, they had so blew many. The I, I think so blew up the kid is when they jumped got the be shark. Friends with the ant. The yeah. ant was their friend. Yes, it was their friend. Don't watch Ant Man with him then. Well, I would say that's a whole different theme, isn't it, Ant Man? Yeah, but he goes, he shrinks down real. Tiny, and he's riding ants yeah. like he's in a stampede. Mm. What age is good age for kids to watch Marvel movies? Maybe you can text. I three seven five three zero. Eight years old, maybe they market ten? the toys for like eight year olds. I mean, I don't know. I don't think my kids watch any. Like Marvel Harry movies Potter, yet. I think he's, he's got to be like ten. Yeah, it gets a little. Harry Potter's be... sweet. It starts off very sweet, but each I don't movie gets darker and darker. And darker. Yeah. I think like read the books first, but your kids old enough, and then watch the movies. Faith loved mm. the books. I have to say, yesterday I got a really qu- good quote from my nine-year-old because he wanted to read a book before he went to sleep. He goes, Mommy, I just love reading books. It just makes me think of all these adventures in my head. And I was Aww. like, oh, my God, there's a teacher somewhere. Sm- her heart is smiling mm-hmm. because, like, for that's what you want kids to think about books. Like, yeah, you need totally to foster got that. totally how he can have an adventure in his mind reading the book. So I do have to make him do the Harry Potter series so that then mm-hmm. he won't be scared. Because I haven't, yeah. Harry Potter was not my thing. I didn't lock in on that. But I do think that it's scary. Is it Vol- Vol- Voldem- Voldemort? Voldemort. Voldemort. Is he, yes. the, is he the bald guy? Yes, yes. That's scary to me. Oh, that's a yeah, he doesn't yeah. have yeah. a watch that with my kids? Mm-hmm. Okay, the, uh, let's go to the next call. 833-390-KRBE. What is the movie you really wanted your kids to like because you liked it, didn't like it? Ivan, good morning. Hey, good morning. Hi. Morning. morning. What's what you got? Movie? Uh, the Sandlot. Oh, oh yeah, great movie. It's kind of long, but I did Just always like, enjoy it. Isn't that like a rite of passage or something? About I it? never yeah. saw it. But kids aren't as into baseball. So as how we old were. is your uh, your kids? I, I don't know. So it, it, it's my, it's one of my favorite movies. So it's my nephew, and he's ten, ten years old, mm-hmm. and. Just sat there staring at me like, why are you making me watch this? <laughs> oh, so, that's the like, worst. Are you Am I grounded? Oh, uh, well, you're so and excited. They're like, what is me, this garbage? Oh, did he is play baseball? Is this the one where You're Killing Me Smalls came from? Yep. Yeah. Plus, yeah. it took place in like yes. the 60s, didn't yes. it, or something? Yeah, I think so. So for him, he's like So the many 60s. good quotes. And they, listen, there are tons of kids who are obsessed with baseball that swear by that movie with their with their yeah. parents. Really, did you see your... that scene where they, tried, they all tried chewing tobacco, tobacco for the first time? No. And they got in that scrambler, that ride, that carnival ride that moves you around. And oh, yeah. They're all like, oh, they yeah. all start throwing up and stuff. Ivan, does your nephew play baseball by chance, just for fun, or on a team, yes, maybe? Yes, he does. And he didn't like it. He oh, does. that's he so gut-wrenching. Baseball. Oh, that's so and gut-wrenching. he asked me at one point, why, why don't they use their cell phones? And I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. oh that's <laughs> cute. <laughs> that's cute. It is true when it doesn't stand the test of time for them. They're like, why are they it's, making this so hard on themselves? They've been born into a different world. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. So other movies people are texting in about Homeward Bound. Oh, uh, yeah. The Rocky Horror Picture Show? I wouldn't imagine your eight-year-old That was like, that. no. That was a weird movie that you'd go to. They'd have like a midnight screening in Houston. They well, they're not doing it. that with eight-year-olds. This person no. text, mm-hmm. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. My six-year-old couldn't handle it. Oh, <laughs> oh really? Oh, wow. Shocker. Shocker. <laughs> 
<laughs> Come oh, on. that's soft. my favorite yeah, I haven't text. seen that one either. That's I don't, soft. I don't soft. 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 <laughs> soft. Okay, go to the listener line, guys. 713-278-VENT. That's 8368. Y'all can leave with us there the message of what movie you loved and you were disappointed. Your kids don't love it because we're opening up the phone lines again for your questions. No question is too dumb. Don't be embarrassed. Ask us a question you don't have the answer to, even though you think everybody else should know the answer. It's called Dumb Question Amnesty. And the number is 833-390-KRBE. We'll talk to you next on The Rule and Ryan Show. Now. now, now, time for Rule and Ryan's Dumb Question Amnesty. You dumb can ask us questions. anything at all. 833-390-KRBE will do our best to answer for you. Uh, so let's just go straight to the phones and uh, get a behind-the-scenes radio answer right oh. out of the box. Okay. Because a lot of people don't, I don't think you can find this answer. Hi, Sergio. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Hi, hi. Welcome, welcome. What is your question today that you don't have the answer to that we can help you out with? Actually, it's kind of like a two-part question. I've often wondered, how do y'all, who gets to decide what songs play on the radio? Oh, that's well, a you know, question. Just, okay, like today we're going to play Taylor Swift or whatever. Who who gets to decide that? Well, that is if, all Irvin. If it was, because our no, social no, no. media? <laughs> Whoever posts on Instagram gets to pick the songs. If this was 1960, it'd be us. Yeah. In 2024, us. it comes down the pipeline. There's somebody employed for that specific job to do all this research about what song gets what. It's called a spin. It's a spin. Every time it's on the radio, it's they a do spin. Their, they do their research. It's also based on requests. You know, that's factored in what people are asking oh, to hear. This is 1960. We have paid off. Oh, man. I'd have a new yeah. washer and dryer. I have a new bag. Yeah. Kevin, be like, all hey, kinds of free stuff. You get cocaine. But also, <laughs> my God. Uh, I'm, allowed, I'm allowed to pick out the songs for when I do my mix at 9 a.m. Right. You Kevin still have does to run it by own. for approval, though, don't you? No, she trusts me anymore. Uh, I mean, you, I've been you, here for 18 years. You so. tied in to yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, what we're playing. She's, she's come down the hallway before and for a couple, you know, a, a, beat, an eyebrow. You know a, 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 a lashing or two, you right. know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, it's a whole, like, scientific thing now. It's mm-hmm. all about research and requests and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, because you want to make sure you're not hearing... Um, the same song right back to back. Yeah, that we're would not going to just play our favorite song. What's your second part of the question? Okay, now, okay, now. Oh. Okay, so how do y'all get the music to the radio station? Like, I mean, I don't know how to really explain it. Okay, now, when a song comes out, how do y'all receive it at the radio? Oh, 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 it's piped in on a server. No, no, no. No, 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 it like it goes to the bosses, the pe- the folks who make those decisions as to when those songs play. The record companies send them an email with an attachment in their either wave file or an MP3. But the file. old days, it was like they'd bring when I grew up in CD. Chicago. CDs, they would yeah. they had two competing stations. They would meet like at say Buckingham Fountain. This is a big uh-huh. fountain. They'd give the album to each station program director, and they had to really? run back to their studios and play it first. And see who could see play, it play it first. first. Yeah. And, and, That's cool. And Sergio, do to, to that point that Eric's talking about, like, in my oh. early days of KRBE, hi, KRBE, what do you want to hear, answer phone, uh, phone answering, you know, for years I would walk by the music director's office and the record label would be in there. And this is the strangest oh. thing because everybody has to do, like, that Oscars win or lose face. The person is presented with the new song the artist wants to put on the radio, and they want the music director to hear it and give their opinion as they're listening to it for the first time in front of the label. So imagine the face you're making because you're like, God, I hope this song is And the label's suck. like a salesperson. They're trying oh, to get yes, yes, yes. They're trying to sell their artists. And if they get bad news from the bosses, I mean, I could tell you stories. Or if they're like, it's interesting. It's I think this oh might my not God. work for us. You can tell when the, when there's someone here trying to sell their song because it's really loud in the hallway. Yes. It is booming down. Uh, like, everyone can hear that song playing in the box. you want to hear it full blast. I you yeah. really can appreciate never, it. never, ever forget my boss in New York when they brought in a big artist. I'm not going to say who the artist is, but it was a big one. Well, they haven't named the album yet. What would you call it? And he goes, writer's block. Ooh. Oh my God! You would have heard he stabbed that record rep in the heart. Yeah, because mm. that that guy put all his blood and sweat yeah, and tears yeah. and everything into that album. There's a song that was famous on Grey's Anatomy. Many songs got famous on Grey's Anatomy called uh, "2 A.M." by Anna Nalik. Y'all remember that song? "2 A.M." by Anna Nalik. It's it 2 A.M. I think you're lonely. 
Yeah. Mm. Why does that sound like Cher? It was Cher? more like a... Yeah, that's <laughs> Cher's like a... No, it's 3 a.m. The Rob uh, Thomas. Yeah, it's 3 a.m. Oh, yeah, that's, that's Matchbox 20. 2 a.m. by Ann and Alec became a huge hit, and I think it must have been like 2005-ish, maybe. Uh-huh. She was in the, the, the office, and y'all, when I say office, it is like the most basic sterile office you can imagine in a movie with the fluorescent lights and the mm-hmm. beige walls and it's just two chairs and a desk remember buddy's office was so small oh, yeah and anna nalik is just sitting there with her guitar oh yeah just... singing across the desk from our program director and it, it must have been so awkward for her but that's like what they have to do right yeah. and i remember standing in the doorway because they're like he's like hey guys i got this girl coming to come sing in my office y'all want it, if y'all come by y'all hear her just come by and and listen in. So I was walking by, and I and then he was like, he just makes a hand motion, like stand there. Come on in. So I'm standing in the like the metal doorway while Anna Nalik is premiering 2 a.m. to this guy, and you know she's just like, I really hope you play my song, mm-hmm. and we played so it. It became Swift a huge it. hit on mm-hmm. um, oh, yeah. on Grey's Anatomy and became monsters for her. But the grind, it's the grind. Remember the song "Bitch" by Meredith Brooks? Oh yeah. She did the same thing. Conference room at a radio station. Plays the song in front of everybody. Everyone's on staring at her. They were eating a deli sandwich. Taylor yep. used to do that too, oh, right? Yeah, Didn't to her mom it. drive her to all yeah, the country kind of stations thing. in yeah. Nashville? Yeah. And said, hey, here's... And Jessica and Simpson's mom labels. did the same thing. Hey, here's my daughter. She really has some pipes on her. Can you hear her? But it's a different world now. Can't do it now. Cannot show up to a record label's office probably because they probably don't You don't need them. Time. Just do your own thing. Yeah, on yeah. YouTube and all that. Turned it into that. Everything had to have record label support back then. Not now. Not now. Becky's up next for Dumb Question. Amnesty at 833 390 KRB. Hi, Becky. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Awesome. So, your question is at all not for children's ears. Just make sure you clean it up when you ask us. Oh. Well, what's your question? Yes. Um, you know, when everyone says, you know, I slept with that person or did you sleep with that person? Why do they use the word sleep? Yeah. When well, you, the alternative yeah. is not uh, PC. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just drop. You don't want to say, I bedded with them. I, bet I it, laid with yeah, him. Yeah, how they say it back in Bridgerton days. I laid with him. I, yes. Is that yeah. right? He he bedded me last night. No, they don't even talk about that because no. you don't. No. You don't? Right? You just yeah, get I, mean, I, sleep, I, I sleep with my pets every night, but, okay. you know, I mean. You don't sleep with so. your pets. But as far as it having it's a uh, physical connotation, that dates back to the 10th century. The what? phrase sleep. Wow. Dates back to the 10th century, meaning that they had Relation. relations. Sleep. And they were so tired that they fell asleep afterwards? Yeah, that was, maybe. Maybe I had to maybe. take off all those corsets and oh my God. Case it is. Oh, oh, armor or whatever. <laughs> fall asleep. Do you, Becky, do you watch Bridgerton by chance on Netflix? No, I do not. No. It is very interesting because it's 1800s British society, and it's about how, yeah. you know, they're 16-year-old debutantes, and if, my God, by the 18th birthday, if they're not married, they're old maids on the shelf. And it is about that. Right. They, they don't even have a kiss. Like, the, the proposal happens, yeah. and if God forbid, even under the proposal window, if you kiss, it's, oh, my God, you're ruined. Like, really? why are you doing mm. that? Now you better mm. marry her. Did they kiss, when, like, mm. in public when they were married? Like, yeah, they kiss married, at the wedding. You're, you're okay they kiss at the wedding. Oh, wow. Oh. Well, that's it, though. Yeah, Back yeah in they only days. kiss at the weddings. They don't, like... And then in one of the, the episodes, there's a couple that's super, super so in love. They're just making out in front of the family. It's like the family as parents, away. We, we try to make sure our kids don't do that stuff. Yeah. And then they get married, then we're begging them to do that to have babies. <laughs> babies, yeah. <laughs> Come on, they're know. my grandkids. Like, it's my wedding tonight. Let's go. Go, oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> Honeymoon. <laughs> it's like, ooh. Let's go. Thank you for oh calling, my. Becky. Um, dumb Question MC continues with Don at 833-390-KRB. Hi, Don. What's your question? Hi, guys. Uh, my question is real simple. Um, in a brand new neighborhood or development, they come up with names like, you know, Walnut Bend or Sycamore Lane. Who, who comes up with this name? The developer is allowed to p- choose those names. Uh, for example, in Sharpstown, uh, Mr. Sharp let his kids pick the names for a lot of the streets. Is that there's a Goo Goo Gaga street? All right. right. <laughs> no, these are like babies. Santi's <laughs> 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 oh would be Ball, See? Balloon, yeah. Dada, and, right. and Ollie. It would be a lot of Dada Street. Yeah. Dada, Dada Street, Dada Lane, and Dada Avenue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Developers can do that. Yeah, if you buy yeah, all that land. And also, name. and also to add to Kevin's answer, Don, um, when you look up different areas, because you know all of America has different different ways that they name them. A lot of times, they would take it by what's mm. in that residential area, like Oak Hill. The woodlands was picked that because of the landscape. A lot mm. of oak trees and lots of hills. Why are there so right. many spring fields? Why does every spring like the capital of Illinois? There was a field. Were there, were there springs like hot yeah. springs? 
I, Illinois, I don't think we had hot springs. I could be wrong. But at Missouri has a Springfield. There's like 10 others. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. Springfield, Ohio, Springfield, Missouri, Springfield, Simpsons, Illinois. That's why Simpsons probably did Springfield. Springfield. It's going to be anywhere. And mm-hmm. they've never revealed where it is. Yeah. So um, it's all about f- famous people who discovered the area, what the landscape looked like. Developers. And then developers. Like the developers of Houston. There weren't the two guys from yeah, New did. York. They just they bought this land. They said, oh, we're going to call it Houston because of Sam Houston. Like, it wasn't because... So then why the in New great, York is it Houston Street, not Houston Street? Those guys, those two didn't own, own the land there. They owned it here. I thought it was two New Yorkers or something. They came down here, they bought this land, and they thought, oh, we're promoted as Houston because hmm. of the gen- or Sam Houston. I don't know enough of my Houston history, shamefully, as the one that wears the sash. Sounds legit, Eric. I believe I you. I love it, but I don't know I'm enough. I think that's what the, it was. The brothers. Uh... Augustus Chapman Allen and John Kirby brothers from New York founded Houston, Texas on August. So Allen Parkway and Kirby. Yeah, on August 30th, 1836, the brothers purchased 6,642 acres of land near where Buffalo Bayou and White Oak Bayou uh, meet, which is now known as Allen's Landing. Dollar 40 an acre, Kevin. Dollar 40 an acre back then. The landowner that you are. (laughs) Dollar 40 an acre. What was that back then, though? That is, woo. Oh, the I Allens mean, advertised uh, the advertise town as- yeah, in the Telegraph and the Texas Register and convinced the Texas Congress to make it temporarily the capital of the Republic of Texas. And, and then thought, Galveston was about to get big like that. And then so it, see, it wasn't just because of Sam Houston. It was no. they just said Well, it says marketing. they named the city after General Sam Houston because he was the hero of the Texas War for Independence. That it just ended a few months earlier when they purchased the acreage. And then it was incorporated as a city on June 5th of 1837. You guys ever think about that? Like, what land? Because you always hear people say, man, people in the 80s, they bought all that land by Katie. And now mm-hmm. it exploded. It's like... But it is a crapshoot and it's a gamble because, look, a lot of things are expensive at the time, right? Because right now, a million dollars is a million dollars. Back then, three hundred dollars may as well have been a million dollars. Yep. Like you're asking them, you know, like we we think, oh gosh, oh gosh, well, that, coulda, woulda, shoulda. It's true, but hey, that's just how it happens, you know. Then you get lucky and you buy some corner, turns into the Galleria, put yeah. a hundred year lease on it, you never have to work again. Oh, Must be nice. Who owns all of the Galleria? Is it just one person? Yeah, no. Or is it a company? Like the land the from six ten the all the way Mrs. to Mrs. Sage, Galleria. Is there Hidalgo a Mrs. Galleria in Westheimer? That whole block. Like, who owns? Is it one person owns all of that, or is it just parcel pieces? It's a Simon property a company. company. Yeah, but so. I mean, Simon property releases it from someone. Like a, they didn't mm. buy it. They didn't buy the dirt. Anyway, Sam is wrapping us up. We got to move on. Fine. Dumb question. Amnesty comes to a close. Big Coming up Sam. next. Stop talking. Sam yeah. sucks. No, Simon property. You suck, Eric. They own the land. They do? Yeah. <laughs> Good comeback. Wow. No, you suck. No, 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 you. No, you. No, you're the weirdo. No, you. Yeah, yeah you weirdo. You suck. You suck. suck. Yeah. You suck. Okay. You're the loser. You suck. Oh, no. Nerd. <laughs> oh, my God. Sam is angry. Wow. We're going to give her a minute. We'll be right back on the Ruler Nerd. <laughs> <Show. laughs> Nerd. Celebrity Scoop. K-R-B-E. It is brought to you by Taqueria Sarandas. And today is Houston's birthday as we were doing Dumb Question Amnesty and we looked up the origin of how Houston came to be. It was founded uh, today. By Alan and Kirby. Alan and Kirby. Hmm. What are their full names? Oh, God. I got to go You already erased it. They're both names. Now I didn't erase it. Hang on a second. So is Kirby Drive off of him? Is there an... Yes. Oh, in Allen Parkway. Parkway. Whoa. Oh, my man. Okay, so... It was... Augustus Chapman Allen and John Kirby Allen. So in that, you know, reading of the fact, none of us realize it says August 30th. And then we go to commercial break and somebody texted, hey, that's today. And we're like, oh, my gosh. And then Eric totally blew our minds. Because if you've been listening to us since six, maybe since seven, hell, the last 20 minutes, it's like the wheels fell off. Like, what's wrong with us today? Let's Is there a full off. moon? Are we drunk? Did we take too many of Ryan's five-hour energies that he packed six of well, them together is, and drank all six of them? The I'm, I'm getting off of those things. You're like beer bongs with those so things. I went with the, I went to, you know, got a nutritionist and. Well, I didn't ask for the di- 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 dissertation of that. No. I'm just saying what's wrong with us today because we're all acting crazy and Ryan's going to tell us the whole dissertation of his diet. What a history of my My diet. My point is here's why we figured out we're acting nuts today. We're all over each other like talking all over each other acting silly just acting like we're in a room by ourselves without microphones. Yeah we forget we're working. Because Eric pointed out that of all the months of the year the month of August does not have a federal holiday to give you the day off. Labor Day is a September holiday. It is the first Monday in September oh. to give the laborers Plus a break. Plus, it's 31 days, and kids go back to school. The pressure of parents 
Uh, all the, Everyone's stressed out because their kids are going back to school or they're back to school or whatever. It's just something so weird about not having a day off. You have to buy all that stuff. You have to pay for their new clothes or, or, or you know, cr- pencils, all that crap you have to buy for your kids. So we're just it's thinking stressful. like now, there was not a federal holiday in August weekend. to kind of take off the edge. And we are on the cusp of one now. Yeah. Oh, so we're like, yeah. that's what it is. It's got to be that. Like, we're so excited. Like, we were joking off the air that our office... Here, if you were a business person, you have a half day today. They close at 12. Oh. I was like, oh, does that mean the Rule and Ryan show gets to go home at 8? Yeah, is half that day. our we half day? Left like 50 minutes ago. Dang it. Right. We're, we're, we're overtime now. Are we in the <laughs> overtime window now? Is we punching overtime? So, yeah, January has you know New Year's Day as a day off, and it's the first day of the month. Then February has MLK. March is a spring ba- break time. Uh, April is usually an Easter Good Friday. W- w- holiday. Good Friday. Did you and also say President's got, Day, too? And President's Day is February as, as, as well, well. Yeah. Right? And then you've got uh, March, April, so May, we have Memorial Day weekend. June, we have Juneteenth. July, July 4th, September Labor Day, and then all the Ember holidays where you got, you know, you got Columbus Day, and Indigenous Peoples Day, and then you've got Thanksgiving, and then you've got Christmas. What's August have? Nothing. August got nothing. Radio camp. Yeah, our radio get away. You have our radio camp. Yeah, but we were working. Yeah. Yeah. We were still around each other, though, Kev. Uh, Yeah, we don't get a break If we go to our corners, (laughs) then we're less. See, but we spent 20 some hours. In this little room. Box together. a week. Mm-hmm. Must be nice. What's the square footage of this Seven room? Seven of us in here? Kevin, get your yeah. measuring tape out. Right Sam's there. like, what, what do you mean? This is big. This is like the size of my house. What is the square what footage is- of this room? That there are... M- there's five of us on the mic, but there's usually seven people total or eight in Nearly here. Nearly 20 by 20, probably. So it's a 20 by 20 room for four hours a day that you are stuck in there with eight people. Could you do that in your office space? In yeah. a 20 by 20 room? And not go crazy. Exactly. Exactly. Eight of y'all. No one, no one like a million people could be listening to your conversation in the oh, office. Oh, yeah. It's actually 16 by 16, so it's not We're even that big. We're in a 16 by 16 room together for all these hours. Oh, oh, scratch your eyes out. It's Rule and Ryan show to tell you what's going down, 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 down in H Town. Well, at least we're all Astros fans. We're not for Kansas City. We got a message for Kansas City, I believe. Here, Ryan right. speaking to the Caribbean right, employees. Good old-fashioned Texas ass whipping. How's that? <laughs> Wait, who won with the Phillies, with the whole Philly series? Who cares about that? It's the Astros. The Phillies took it? Royals three. Two to one, yep. Yeah. But they got their butts kicked so bad. It was like 10-0. It was, it was right, right after. It was nice. oh, oh. So, by the way, Simone yeah. Biles is going to be front and center tonight at Minute Maid Park. She's going to throw out the first pitch. Nice. Oh, that's right. That fireworks. Uh, oh. She's not a stranger to this. She's done it a couple of times before. She did it before Game 2 of the 2019 World Series. She, did the she also did it in 2016. Uh, that year, the Olympics were in Rio de Janeiro. Nice. Rio de Janeiro. She, she's been everywhere because her hu- husband plays for the Bears. Oh, really? The Bears. The Bears. Duh Bears. She's the Texans now. And then she was at, uh, what's Bears. her name, Caitlin Clark's game two oh, nights she? ago. Mm. The Indiana Fever. Dang. She's, so she's, all over. she's hitting everything. Good for her. Eric, what do you think of uh, Jason Hayward? Uh, Dodgers lost him, and he could have really gone anywhere, and he came to Houston. He got rid of him, so he, he picked a winner. He's like, I'm. Because he's like, oh, I'm with the Dodgers. We're going to go to the World Series. Mm-hmm. And they booted his butt because they had some other players come back. And their loss is our game. He's a lefty. I, last night he knocked in two runs. Mm-hmm. And so it's looking good so far. So Kansas City. So How about a good old-fashioned Texas ass whipping? How's we have that? three more games with them. We won last <laughs> night 6-3. to three. Yep. Tonight, like you said, Friday fireworks. Did you mm-hmm. say... Gallery Furniture is doing something. Yesterday, they sent out a, a text message if you have ever purchased Yeah, they're going to go see me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Guys. Sam is going to be at Gallery Furniture on Sunday, but yesterday, <laughs> Jim McInville was giving away tickets for tonight's game, but I'm no, sure it's all they're running right now. <laughs> yeah. But Sam is going to be the game, there Sam? on Sunday. What time, Sam? <laughs> 10 to 12. Okay. And Sam is going to be answering all your questions about Taylor Toss Up. But yeah. Because everyone's calling about yes, that absolutely. starting on Tuesday. But don't show him my bed because for some reason, yeah, you, you think they're going to sleep with you on your bed. What the? Or something. What? Oh, Eric what? said what? to what? Sam. She me Let me clarify, All I said was, Henri Crazies. Eric said to Sam, show them the bed I bought for $14,000. And then Sam said, yeah, that's going to be really weird if somebody walks up to me and says, No, she goes, whatever show pervert. Me, er, show me Eric's bed. A lot of perverts in here. I'm like, I didn't say sleep on the bed. I just said show them yes, the bed. Eric. But how well, would so- I even know which bed was your bed? You were late on the last was... time on the Facebook Live. I watched your live. I didn't know that was your bed, though. And you had the First, two I would undress you and lay you down, kiss Stop all it. over your body, and completely creepy, relax Ryan. you. Ew. How's that for starters? Ew. Are you talking Ryan? to me, Ryan? Ew. What? <laughs> I would not like that. Do you get horny at all? And that's how Ryan got his Maybe. fiance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> he was virgin. That's his move. Gross, Ryan. Why do you even have those drops now. in your machine? Those are creepy. Can I see yours, please? Can you stop? I, where's Ew. the touch of one? I thought that was his next one. No, oh, no. Don't encourage any more of that. We're moving on. Special K, look at the shiny thing over here. Funny group for all. Save us. Can I touch it? Get us out of this already. Or I'm just going to go to break. Let's go. Stop. Okay, Sam, just hit the button. Just hit the button.